Welcome back, everyone, to the last expedition match replay for today. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we have a match between Randy and their number one fan on Scaryland. Randy's fan with rovers, and Randy also with rovers, because, as I was mentioning in the Fairyland game earlier, that's more often what you see on this, well, both Scaryland and Fairyland, though I think Scaryland's a bit flatter. I mean, it's hard to look at that. If you look at the actual pathing map... Well, okay, actually, I can't compare. I never checked Fairyland. But yeah, I think Scaryland is a touch flatter, but not by much. But clearly by enough, because we do definitely see a lot more rovers here. At any rate, both players going rovers. Randy's fan going a little bit slower out with the early scouting. Randy able to spot out what's going on there, though. Sees Randy goes for rovers as well. Randy's gone for Guardian Com or Randy's fans gone for Guardian Com. I mean it's not super important. It's just sort of a thing to know. More importantly, I think realizing that you no, know, Randy's expanded much faster than Randy's fan, though Randy's fan trying to slow it down, not able to do much. I mean, the slowdown doesn't really affect anything unless it's been built. And that is not gonna have really much of an effect, so. Really, just scouting. Randy's fan knows Randy's been a little bit aggressive on expansion, so Randy's fan just following suit. And Randy... That being said, they're... It looks like they're being a little bit faster on the Scorchers, but it's, it's like very minute things. At this point in the game, it's not super important. Like... Neither player has really turned anything into any kind of significant advantage. Though, that being said, Randy... I feel like they're being a little bit faster on expansion. They're being a little bit more aggressive when it, com when it comes to setting up their economy, especially their energy economy, in terms of how the overdrive is going to work. And... Also with... Also with the character, it's about the same. That's about the same, but there is a slight advantage in terms of overall metal, and Randy is taking full advantage of that. Randy's fan, on the other hand, is... Again, just feels like they're going a little bit more slowly. They're expanding a little more slowly. They're building army a little more slowly. As a result, they're... going to be taking territory a little more slowly, unless they're really mindful. Now, granted, a map like Scaryland, you do have more room to expand a bit more slowly, just because a lot of the expansions are really vulnerable. So even if someone takes it first, it can easily be retaken. Just because getting in is so hard. And since we're not playing bots, this tricky little hole here is not a thing. Vehicles cannot pass through that, so there's only one way in and out of these peninsulae. Which means Randy is probably going to have a slight advantage there, in fact, because they can more easily raid around. They have a bit of a larger army. If they can, if this fight goes on, Randy is, Randy's going to easily win this. Especially with the Fens are coming in for extra support. Those Scorches coming in from Randy's fan... They don't really have a chance. They are forced to stay out of there. If they go for it, Randy is going to get a massive military advantage and can basically just take the entire map from that point on. As it stands, though, neither player particularly confident they can push too hard into their opponent or take map too quickly. I mean, they're working on it, but they're not... I don't think I'm going to be able to do much beyond that. Randy's fan... I mean, I got the commander going into that little peninsula. It's probably okay. Probably not going to get punished for it. Randy doesn't look like they have anything that's making them aware of it. So right now, yeah, Randy's fan. They're able to kind of make up some of the losses they had. But again, those losses are translating into a lack of Scorchers. They're going for it, though. They're trying to take out the fences directly. Not managing to take out a single fencer. One Scorcher goes down, but Randy's fan losing their entire army and taking out nothing except one Scorcher. For Randy. I think. Yeah. Randy lost this Scorcher. Everything else is Randy's fan's loss. Randy's fan has no army. At all. Okay, not at all. They have three fencers. But that's not going to really help here. So Randy right now, they have free reign in the map. They can do whatever they want. I mean, yes, the start is right here. It's going to be a bit of a pain, but... This course is already here to deal with it. So, other than that, Randy can easily take this map and make it their own. There is nothing stopping them. 
So for now, Randy, I don't know what you're... I don't know what you're planning, but man, it's going to be exciting to see. Randy's fan, on the other hand, is going... Going to be having a fight from the back foot. Still in awkward position. I suppose the fact that they've built up over here, but they have the defenses to at least keep it safe for the time being. But again, Randy has a significantly larger army. I mean, that compared to four scorchers and... Okay, one, one ripper is good. Having a ripper is good. Having two rippers is better. So they're definitely there. The problem is just... What are they going to do? I mean, two... Okay, well, two rippers will deal with the scorchers effectively. But Randy, they are running a... Wow. Okay, reclaim primarily, yes. But still, they are going to have... Nope. The Geo Plant, add an extra power, and then use that for overdrive, because it's probably going to be a pylon built up. There it is! So from the pylon, they're going to be able to get a bunch of overdrive, and from the overdrive, they are going to be able to massively increase their economy, on top of the fact that Randy pretty well has map control right now. I mean, this southeast hadn't even been taken yet. This peninsula over in the center, west side, that's not yet been taken either. I don't think it's going to be taken anytime soon. Randy's fan is pushing for it, Randy is aware of it, though. They have radar coverage of the area, so they're going to be aware of, hey, this is being taken, or this is being pushed towards. So they can probably deal with it without too much issue, assuming they don't lose too many forces to the fencers. Actually, Randy's van is, it has been able to build up a bit of a counterforce. Not much. They only have the one ripper with that force, the other one a little out of position. But they do have it. So Randy is going to have to be careful how they approach. Though I would... I mean, Ravagers right now wouldn't be a bad idea to help deal with the, the Fencers. Scorchers, while they are fast and deal a lot of damage, the Fencers... They kind of... And this number's kind of how DPS the Scorchers coming in. Not gonna lie, it's not that effective. Ravagers are a better option because they tank the Fencers far more effectively. And are still pretty fast. Still, though... I don't know. I mean, Randy's fan. Playing it clever. I like this. I like this a lot. Hitting the cor hitting the edge of the fencer line just to avoid as much DPS as possible. Only worked for a little while, but got a free fencer out of it. Okay, well, got a cheap fencer out of it. Lost one on the counterattack, but still, that was well that was well thought out. I like that. You don't see a lot of taking advantage of sides because units are very mobile. Fencers are not one of those. Fencers have to stop to fire. So, as a result, they are going to be a little bit more vulnerable to side on edge attacks. The term, I believe, is called crossing the T. Against most other units, they generally just reposition in a way that nullifies that approach. So, that's what we don't see very often. Still, Randy's fan is going to be dealing with... Actually, a fairly evenly split map. All things considered, Randy's fan started out... A bit of a struggle, but they have managed to take half the map. They're actually managing to secure this expansion. I thought that Randy would take back. So for now, I don't see Randy's fan really having too many issues. And with... But still, Randy's fan does still have an army disadvantage. They are trying to work back from that. Switching into badgers as a way of tr dealing with the army sieging of their base... Not really a full contain, but it is still something. Same time, Scorchers come around. Getting rid of that radar. Trying to get through, but the Rippers are in place. Same time, Fencer Wars coming in here. Scorchers going over the edge of the Fencers. Randy actually losing a lot of their Fencers. Again, this is solid positioning from Randy's fan. Same for the Scorchers coming in there. Randy's Scorchers coming in kind of one at a time. Giving Randy's fan a lot of room to even out the attrition disadvantage. And thanks to the economic relative parity, it's also... Pretty well evening out the army disadvantage, too. That being said, it's risky. Scorch is coming in here. Picking off the rippers as they can. Randy is out of rippers. Sorry, rippers. Out of fencers. They have plenty of rippers. They don't have fencers. And kind of the Scorch is coming in here. Trying to get a counterattack. The rippers for Randy's van are out of position. Badges are all that remain. Out of position or dead. I'm going with dead. 
That's giving Randy all the room in the world to push through here. They should be able to get rid of basically this entire expansion. Well, okay, not dead, but definitely out of position. The Rippers were way out of position. Completely unable to stop the Scorchers coming in here. And now Randy's fan, they're starting to lose out. They also, not to mention, didn't realize they didn't have full production in their main base. Randy does. Randy has got, what, the five? Yeah, the 50 metal, four caretakers, 50 metal total. Randy's fan only has two. They can only push 30 metal into the factory, so they are accessing hard on top of losing a bunch of their economy. Granted, in a position where if they break through this, they get nice reclaim, but that's... That is a tall ask right now. Badger's coming in, doing what they can to help deal with the, score, the stingers. I mean, it's not nothing, but that stinger is still a lot. Still a lot to be careful about. One of the rippers does go down. The second ripper is up. Two more rippers on top of what was already there. So there's room. There's hope. There is space for Randy's fan to stay in this, but Randy looks like this is going to be a slow push into Randy's fan's base. I'm really looking at this as a tough situation. I mean, Randy does not have rivers in the best position for dealing with this, but... Well, they've come in. Now they are. Actually, the Scorchers for Randy's fan going down once again. While the main base reclaim attempts by Randy's fan are being stuffed by fencers. Which themselves are being stuffed by badgers. And I'm surprised we don't see an escalation to impalers immediately, but we don't. Like, Randy would just go for impalers. No, instead going for antbots. Are they going for... Okay, so I'm thinking bulkheads, probably. Possibly going for Grizzly, though. But I feel like it's going to be bulkheads just to just further that slow push. And indeed, it is going to be bulkheads. So the bulkheads coming in, that's, again, that's just going to be more... Kind of, more skirmishy artillery. More assault forces coming in here. I mean, they're reasonably tough, so they can at least deal with the Badgers for a while. Oh, and I was wrong about the Impalers. The Impalers do come in for Randy. Okay, smart move. It's exactly the escalation I was hoping to see, and we see it. Though, this is going to be Artillery Wars for a while. Mark my words, this is this is going to be... going to be a bit of a longer one. I mean, the Badgers are going to be tough to get through. The Bulkhead's doing what they can. Supported by Rippers going through the minefield. Bulkhead's able to at least tank most of those shots, but not a question of whether they can tank the shots. It's a question of whether they can wipe out the forces once they get to the other side. Randy's sending in Scorchers. Not really able to work here. Does manage to get some reclaim off the fields, though. That's, that's still important. It's a bit of a slog, but it is going in Randy's favor. Randy's fan does have the production finally up to snuff. But they just don't have the economy as strongly as Randy's fan as Randy does. Oh, oh, we lobstering and scorchers. I have actually never seen this before. I mean, you don't often see Amphbot used as a second factory, but we're getting lob scorchers from the looks of it. And no, nope, no, we're not. Nope, I wanted to see that, but that is not what's going to happen. Randy's fan coming here trying to wipe out the proxy Amphbot factory. Does get rid of the stinger does provide quite a bit of hassle, and again, does remove that, what would have looked like a big Scorcher throw. Okay, are we doing a Chain Lobster throw? Yep, that's, but there's nothing to throw! Unless we're throwing away the, can we throw away enemies? You can! Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Cool, okay. So yeah, throw a couple of Randy's units into the drink. Have them boil to death. Yeah, th this water is damaging, by the way. In case you're not familiar with Scaryland, the water hurts. I didn't realize that lobsters could do that. They aren't very commonly used. They're never used for an offensive purpose like that, but there you go. Learn something new. Unfortunately, only managed to grab two at the end, but still, we could see it used for another attack, or could have if the lobsters weren't dead. This point, swapping over to archers. Solid force. Not as gimmicky, but solid nonetheless. Same time, though, this northwest Penin or this northern peninsula getting wiped out. The northwestern one could fall right after. And that means Randy's fan is in a bit of trouble. They're still going to hold on to the western expansion, no problem. These fencers will not last. But the northwest is done. The north is done. 
Randy's fan gradually losing more and more. They have managed to push back a little bit against this this proxy factory, though. Certainly nowhere near throwing in the towel, but having lost that expansion over here, that's still a big deal. Melee crashes over to the north. Randy looks like they're trying to find an angle to hit the Lotus from, or avoid the Lotus from. But it's not happening. And unfortunately, all of those Scorchers are basically going in. That was a suicide mission. Trying to take out what they can from Randy's force, or Randy Fan's forces in the process, though. And they didn't go down with that fight. They managed to take some in response, but they are themselves dead. And Randy, now operating at a bit of an army deficit, relying entirely on the advantage they have from production, or from resources, which itself is fading. In fact, it itself was largely focused on combination of overdrive and reclaim, and that reclaim isn't really there. I mean, a lot of the reclaim has been claimed, so unfortunately, the rest of it is not free, or Randy's fan is able to take it. Now, I just find that the, well, the parody is because Randy's fan is reclaiming, but they have a ton to reclaim with, so this is going to last for long enough. Randy's fan could turn this into a comeback, especially with the assault going to the main base. At the very least, pushing Randy back further. But again, this firebase here, that's really the key thing. Firewalker coming in to get rid of all the bandits, get rid of, or sorry, bandits, get rid of all the, all the badgers and get rid of all their claws, all the mines they're laying. But they are getting dangerously close to that firebase. At this point, the caretakers, I mean, they're starting to run out. The, the unit, the actual mobile units to help defend against this are pretty well gone. The firewalker, it's got another 12 seconds before it's done. So this probably isn't going to fall before the firewalker is built. But it still is going to be a problem. And off the back of the Badgers, Scorchers are coming in. Fences are coming in. This base, right as the Firewalker is constructed, the base under heavy fire. Unfortunate timing for Randy's fan. Just a little bit late on that. Still pushing that Firewalker. Does take it out. So a little bit late on the, on the offense, but the attack is successful. Nonetheless, Randy's fan is able to break the contain. Able to break the firebase. Does have to worry about a second fireworker coming in, but they got a minute before that's a problem. So they basically don't. Randy losing the massive front position basically because they lost a bunch of their. Are they ever throwing forces into the grinder? And unfortunately, Randy's fan was just being more efficient. Unfortunately for them. Fortunately for Randy's fan. Oh, Daywalker apparently is, sounds like they are Randy's fan. So we call him Daywalker for now. So Randy's fan, also known as apparently Daywalker, confirm that please in chat, Daywalker. You're you're in chat right now. I'd like to know that for sure that you're a Randy's fan. Or the number one Randy fan. Because I think we're all kind of fans of Randy. They're a very strong player. But apparently the nickname is number one Randy fan. So I was curious. If that's the case, I'll go with that because it's honestly way easier to say. For now, though, Randy's fan, or possibly Daywalker, able to start really counterattacking as you do following a contain break. Randy realizing that this is a problem, went in with all sorts of rippers coming in here. And for that, I mean, rippers, that, that, that is the counter for dealing with the Scorchers that have been pushing forward. But again, this is a fairly well-mixed force by Randy's fan, Daywalker, whatever. Unfortunately, and yeah, the person to do is pointing in the chat there. Fan has plenty of reclaim, or daywalk or whatever. Plenty of reclaim, not a whole lot of energy, largely because we're on a low wind period. Once the wind picks up, that will be there, but I would recommend building up a geoplant. Because the geoplant right here. Turns on reclaim in the geoplant. Turn that into making sure you don't excess, because that's really coming down to that. Though the wind picking up quickly enough that it's not going to be the biggest deal. Excess will be averted. And at the same time, that pushback is coming in. Randy's fan is able to... Again, they were able to push back the contain. They were able to maintain themselves. Honestly, that was that was very impressive. Like, switching over to Badgers was a smart choice. And then from there, just... You know, making sure you maintained everything outside of the base. You know, as Randy harassed... I mean, that's a big thing. This Force of Scorch is being used in a suicide mission. It was kind of useful, but it only got rid of four metal per second. At the cost of about half of Randy's force that was actually stationed here. Which opened things up for Randy's fan to actually push in and start wiping out 
everything that Randy had built up. And now there's going to be a, that's a ton of reclaim, which is unfortunately being accessed a little bit, but turn into a Strider Hub, because you know what? Why not? We're 18 minutes into the game. We got 60 metal per second with loads of reclaim that's going to still last for quite some time. You might as well. Going in for a Dante. Makes perfect sense. At the same time, though, we have Juggernaut coming out here from a second jump on factory built in Randy's base. Which is a reasonable threat against all these Scorchers. And a reasonable threat against the Badgers. But it's otherwise not that much of a threat. Faraday as well being built up over here for a bit of another fire base that Randy's built up. And it's looking like Randy is going to be able to defend against the frontal assault. But the side assault, not so much. Scorchers coming in here, not a whole lot has been set up to actually stop this. One thing that Randy's fan did have going for them was a lot of defense in depth. They had built... They had built defensive structures everywhere because they didn't have a strong army at the time, and that paid off. Same time, though, Randy... I mean, they aren't slowing things down, but they do have the Rippers coming in here. Randy's fan did not see them coming. This is their last chance to escape, and they are not taking it. Placeholder coming in here, but it doesn't matter. These Scorchers are on a suicide mission. Can't say it worked out well for Randy, so I don't know if it's going to work out well for Randy's fan, but at the very least, it was a fully successful mission. Suicide and all. Randy's fan... Still maintaining attrition advantage. Does have that Dante a minute away from being complete. So this is kind of risky. Dan Randy's fan does have to make sure they don't lose units in the process of building the Dante. They've got to play this a bit defensively. So far, they are. Although swapping in Ravagers, I like that. I wanted to see that earlier. We get to see it now. Mainly because, again, it is very useful for dealing with units that don't fire very often, but hit pretty hard. And with that, the Ravager's able to start just breaking through Randy's next line of defense. Fortunately, the Faraday is stopping them. They were a little bit too close together. you got to be careful about that. That's why I always say to line move, because splash damage is a thing. However, that does still tank out that Faraday. So at the very least, while that was a reasonably good trade for Randy, it's as part of a much larger attack that is not going their way at all. The Scorcher's gradually pushing in. Apparently, Randy's fan decided to go for defense by way of offense. It's quite risky, though. The Ripper's in play. This is not working out too well. Scorcher's taking out... Oh, what? A dozen Scorchers to take out two fencers? Not a fair trade. Same time, though, more Scorchers coming in, wiping out the rest of these southern expansions. I think that was Randy building the wall there, and that is going to be useful. Randy's fan has no way out of here, since that wall is blocking the only safe escape. But they are able to get out just barely, simply by kind of positioning. No, never mind. No, no, they, they retreated. That was a bad move. Well, Scorch is dead. Juggernaut's out. Dante is out as well. And there's a lot of cloaked units that this Juggernaut has to now deal with. However, it's been spotted. The, the Corny has been spotted. A lot of the cloaked units around it have been spotted as well. Randy's fan is pretty well out of safe reclaim on top of that. They managed to rebuild some of their economy. And do, I do like they managed to get rid of a lot of Randy's economy in the process. Though, again, this may yet turn the tables as a lot of units were lost in the process. Randy's fan is now behind attrition-wise. So probably, again, about even army value-wise. This Dante is a huge investment for that. A lot of stuff is here directly able to deal with it. The placeholder in particular being the main thorn in its side. But that's not going to last for too long. Last placeholder bomb has been dropped. No additional placeholders are in play, so that Dante is going to be free to maneuver as it likes from this point on. So long as no other placeholders get built, which I expect they will be, but I don't see any... No, we are... We are getting free Dante. A free-to-move Dante, not, not a cost-free Dante. Although, to be fair, it's likely to make cost at this point. The Firewalkers remaining a problem for the Badgers. Scorchers trying to find some way in. The Rippers are make, Rippers on Randy's side making that impossible. Randy's fan, on the other hand, coming around the side, tanking again that Faraday. The Dante should be able to take it out. Second Faraday had been built. Can't sound surprised. It's a great defensive structure. But it's no match for that. No match for the double Ravager supporting the Dante. And those Ravagers, once again, just tanking everything. Not that the Dante really needs it, but it's always nice to have. Dante is a very clear and obvious target that gets a lot of focus. To have the Ravagers come around and tank help for it as well, just it helps out that little bit. 
Because for now, Randy's fan, they're maintaining attr attrition parity, managing to get some damage across the map. Actually, managing to get a Scorcher line into Randy's base. This is huge. Randy's fan has been trying to do that this entire time, unfortunately only managing to get two metal extractors. Didn't manage to push farther than that. Had they done so, they probably would have been able to take out a couple caretakers. Would have would have really helped stop Randy's production. And Randy, once again, with a proxy F bot, going for the Grizzly to help deal with the Dante. The Juggernaut, however, dealing with the Dante. The Dante in the drink! Oh no. This is very bad. There needs to be some terraforming going on right now. Randy's fan, they have a Mason, it's on it. Terraforming that Dante out of the lake. Out of the bloody, out of the boiling lake of blood. That may be its tomb if this terraformer doesn't happen quickly enough. And there it goes. That Mason. That Mason is it. Randy's fan, their commander coming in to help out. The Dante is out of the water. Juggernaut not quite managing to take it out, but unfortunately it took a lot of damage while submerged. And now it still has to deal with that Juggernaut. Juggernaut has moved back, has been repaired. Same time, Randy Sam with the Ravagers, able to get a lot of damage along the side. But their Dante has gone down, and with that, Randy gains a 3,000 metal attrition advantage. So unfortunately, despite all that effort, it was for nothing. As the Dante did not survive the barrage of Firewalkers being thrown into the lake and all the damage that happened beforehand. I appreciate that that was pulled out with terraforming. That was clever. I I mean, there was no lobster or anything. That was the only real option, but unfortunate. That didn't really save it. Still, the Ravagers coming around the side at least are keeping Randy from having as strong of economy as it would otherwise. But Randy's fan with no reclaim available, they're starting to fall behind. I mean, Randy has 7,000 metal worth of reclaim, essentially for free. Randy's fan has fallen back. Their their economy woes are starting to catch up to them. Losing that Dante was huge. Going for another one, but I don't know if it's safe enough to do that. And I'm really surprised that we're not seeing much beyond these Ravagers. The Ravagers are basically it. The Ravagers are the only hope. Managing to get rid of some stuff, but... Gotta be careful. That pylon is gonna explode. That is gonna hurt them. One of the Ravagers goes into the drink as a result. Gotta be careful about that. That water is dangerous. You can't just pull them out of there. It's That Ravager's dead. Randy Sand, unfortunately, losing all the Ravagers to that. Probably didn't help that one of them fell in, but I don't know if that really mattered, ultimately. Yeah, boiling blood is not good for, for robot circuitry. I mean, they are somewhat heat-resistant, but not that much. That's also the blood. I think it just like, gets in there and it's like... You know, just, it gets in all over them. Even if it cools, then it starts to coagulate and it just gets in the way of all the circuitry and starts short-circuiting everything because of the bits of iron in there. It just... Yeah, it causes all sorts of problems. At any rate... Yeah, Randy's fan is just pushing... Well, they're trying to push. They're throwing in a few Scorchers, but not really getting a whole lot of traction. Managing to get some reclaim to their name, though. That's the bigger thing here. Getting that territory back. Getting some of that 7k reclaim. It's what they need in order to stay in this game. Especially if they are going to go for another Dante, which they have been. So, yeah, they're going to, as they're going for another Dante, they need that. Goes to the Geo as well, which is good. They can use that to set up some... and get the pylon going. Use that to get... A little bit of extra overdrive in there. That is definitely what they need. Ran Both Randy and Randy's fan going heavily for the overdrive. But Randy's fan, again, just has way more reclaim to work with. And that reclaim has been really... It's been bearing fruit. Let's just look. I mean, Randy's army right here. Like, a 13,000 metal army compared to what Randy's fan has is like 5,000 metal. Even with the Dante, it's only half the so or only half the cost. Now, granted, there's a Grizzly and a Juggernaut. Wait, what's the Juggernaut? No, I didn't include the Juggernaut there, did I? No, I did not. That's mostly Rippers and Fencers. And Badgers. It's a lot of small units. A lot of small units, and that is hard to deal with. I mean, the Grizzly is relatively easy to deal with. You just... I mean, okay, not if you don't have Fencers or Impalers or anything like that, but still, it's... You know, it's a direct target... Randy's fans, of course, is on the side. Let's get rid of some of the fencers providing a little extra pressure. 
But that's not really going to be good enough. Unfortunately, the Scorchers will not be able to get through to take out the, ba the Badgers. And Randy, again, with the major army advantage. That is posing a major problem as Randy... Oh, doubling the army value. Or doubling the economy. That will quickly double the army value. I think at this point, that may already be the case. Randy's fan losing all their forward reclaim potential. Losing the Ravagers over to the western side of the map they were trying to use to attack with. And... Now it's just a matter of Randy being able to push in. They have the Juggernaut, they have the Grizzly. A couple of nice tanky units to push in there. And I mean, the Juggernaut particularly to help get rid of all the tiny units that are going to try to really cause problems. And I saw earlier, effective against Dante too. Which I did not expect. That's They're quite heavy. Or at least they're quite voluminous. I would expect to be heavy. Pretty sure they're not made of styrofoam, but then mass in 0k is a bit of a weird... I mean, mass in the spring engine in general is a bit weird. How it works in 0k is also kind of weird. So, hard to say. But the Juggernaut is able to do its work. Clear out the force, leaving only about a dozen rippers. Or not even a dozen, like nine rippers. And a Dante. Randy's fan... 10,000 metal behind by attrition. That's basically the entire value of this army. Is the attrition difference. This army is the difference in attrition between the two sides. That's how much attrition matters, especially at this stage in the game. Dante coming in to try to settle that score. Proving to be quite the challenge, though, between the Grizzly and the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut looks... Okay, the Juggernaut definitely having some trouble. And no, that Dante is definitely heavy enough. It's not a big deal. But the problem, of course, is that ultimately it's just too much firepower to concentrate on the one unit and nothing to repair it. And with that, Randy's fan realizes there's no hope and throws in the towel. But I gotta say, considering that Randy largely had an army advantage for the majority of the game, especially near the end, but just broadly speaking, and pretty solidly had a metal advantage the entire game, I am very impressed by how well Randy's fan was able to hold on, push back, break out of the contain, and then managed to apply a lot of pressure to Randy. Unfortunately, that Juggernaut did turn things around. Like that, I think the fact that Juggernaut took out the Dante is the big thing. But the combo jugg Juggernaut-Firewalker combo did so much damage. The Firewalkers took out the Badgers, which was Randy's fan's ace in the hole. And the, then with the Juggernaut wiping out the rest of the army, that's the thing. It's very efficient for that. Yeah, that was kind of that was kind of done. The only real option to get rid of it was the Dante, but that unfortunately fell into the... If that didn't fall into the lake, it would have been fine. But with this little thing of water, like, that's... That is so huge, the fact that the water is damaging. If it weren't for that, I think that Dante would have survived even with the Firewalkers. It would have been repaired and everything. But, nope. As it... As it worked out, just wasn't enough. So that was... That was well played, though. I really appreciated that. Anyway, that is going to be it, though, for me tonight. So, thank you all of you for watching, and until next time, have a good night, everyone.